guys. As you know, this tactile knife co Maverick is technically on loan to me from one of my good YouTube friends. So I thought what I would do in this video, of course with his permission, is take this knife apart, tune it up, give it a nice sharpen because it's a little on the dull side now after all of its use and love, and make it a bit of a new knife again. So I thought this would be an interesting video to tune this knife up, kind of take a look at the internals and show you guys the, not necessarily transformation, but just end project of this knife. So without any further ado, let's start by doing what we do best here and take this knife apart. So first off, we are going to need I think I'm gonna guess a T8 screw for this guy. I think as a rule, I think this is entirely T8s. And I'm honestly really loving seeing knives one hit like a standardization where there's like one screw to dismantle the whole knife. And two, I'm really liking seeing more knives taking advantage of T8 Torx because to me, in my opinion, Torx bits are one of my least favorite of the different um, kind of screw patterns out there. And I realize that they're more secure, less, you know, like, um, I guess idiot proof because people can't, just random people can't take them apart, so to speak. So, you know, it makes it a little bit more, so it makes it more uh, secure. And it means that people can't, you know, just like, break into a knife or something. I don't know, that's the original context for Torx bits. So they're meant to be a more secure way of doing things. But I feel like Torx bits, um, even T8s to an extent, can be a little bit, you know, strip happy if you're not cautious with them. So they're not my favorite to deal with. Um, I will say there's something to be said about the good old classic, you know, like Phillips and slotted bits because they're classics. And honestly, they just tend to perform pretty darn good. But like I said, I am happy to see, at least in the knife world, this kind of move towards, um, you know, like making a knife that just has one Torx bit across the board because previously, you know, a lot of knives would take advantage of, you know, having like, you know, a T8 and then a T6 or sometimes a T10 for, you know, the, um, they would take advantage of like a T10 for, you know, the pivot and then maybe like a T6 for body screws. And then especially when it came to Benchmade, they were notorious about having like an ungodly amount of T6 Torx bits for their, um, like body screws. And they would just have random body screws like everywhere. So it was, a uh, Definitely a time to be alive, I will say. Anywho, as you can see, this guy is coming apart. At least I hope so. Looks like it is. So now we just gotta pop off this body screw here. Or sorry, pivot screw. So overall, like I said, I'm fairly impressed with the amount of, or how few, you know, um, like actual screws go into this guy. Like it's pretty impressive, pretty happy with that. Um, Unfortunately, this is not a reversible or like, you know, a uh, lefty friendly knife, ironically, for this being an access lock. So that is a little bit of what I would consider a tragedy. But overall, as a righty, I'm not that disappointed because it doesn't really affect me that much. Now, like I said, in the kind of review of this knife, I guess I'm going to have to push this guy out here. Um, like I was saying in the review of this knife, this is titanium, but these are titanium code or not coated, but titanium covered steel scales. So you'll notice that like on this side, as the knife kind of falls apart, you know, like this is still steel on the inside and um, on this other side as I wiggle it out, is still going to be steel. So, you know, take that for what it's worth. That may be a deal breaker for some. I mean, for me, it's not a huge, huge deal. So yeah, it's definitely a little bit disappointing in my opinion in that regard. I wish that this would have been like a whole titanium, you know, like bit, but you know, it is what it is. So unfortunately this side does not seem like it really wants to come free. So I think we're just going to leave it be um, with this guy kind of screwed in here. And I'm not quite entirely sure, you know, like what all that's about. So we're just going to let that be. But in the meantime, we'll take a look at the rest of this little knife. So other things about this knife that I am happy to see, um, you know, I think this is a really popular element of more kind of modern um, washer 
designed folders you see a lot more like knives that are running on washers nowadays kind of copying in chris reeve knives uh footsteps and so you see that this is of course a you know a phosphorus bronze washer unlike a lot of the teflon washers we've been seeing in previous takedown videos these are in fact phosphorus bronze but they do have a lot of holes in them and i really like these holes because for those who don't know what the holes exactly do basically what they do is they um, capture lubricant and then add it to like add to the lubricity. All right, so like I was saying, you know, they definitely took a step or a they definitely took a note out of the Chris Reeve knives book by making these have holes in them for retention of extra lubrication. So that will definitely come in handy. Now, as far as everything else goes, it's pretty conventional. You know, it's just a crossbar lock. So this is what you'd expect to see out of the tang of the blade. Now, one thing I kind of wish um, about this, I do wish the thumb studs were removable, but overall, we will see how hard this thing is to sharpen. Typically, when it comes to the wicked edge, I tend to, uh, when I sharpen them, break the knife down just to its blade. And so that way I can clamp, you know, like right around here or here. It gives me a little bit better leverage for adjusting around the thumb studs of a knife. So we will see how that goes, but yeah, I'm gonna give this guy a quick tune up because it's not horribly dull, but it's definitely um, seen better days. I'm also curious to see how well this Magna Cut sharpens up. So yeah, that'll be the next step. All right guys, so now for some final thoughts, wrapping it up on the Maverick by Tactile Knife Co. As you guys can see here, it's a little bit sticky just because it just got reassembled, but um, yeah, it overall went together and uh, went together and got taken apart fairly okay. It's a little bit of a weird knife, I'm not gonna lie. The few things, at least from the disassembly side of things that I disliked about this knife are this pocket clip is a very, very weird overbuilt or overthought of a uh, clip. I really dislike this clip. Um, as you guys can see, I couldn't really remove this side uh, or this particular pocket clip from the thing. So I don't really know how exactly these like barrel spacers are supposed to work and how it all screws together, but it is very weird and I am not a huge fan of this uh, pocket clip system. And I mean, for me, in my opinion, when it comes to pocket knives, like I'm a really big fan of, at least when it comes to pocket clips, like keep it stupid simple. Something like this Civivi, you know, pocket clip is nothing fancy. It's not really, you know, super special, but it completely works and it's very easy to assemble and disassemble. So I would say ditch this pocket clip as soon as possible for Tactile Knife Go. Obviously for the owners, they can't really do that. But uh, yeah, I would say ditch that pocket clip. The other thing I kind of disliked is that these little blue bits of anodized steel, titanium, whatever they are, um, Tactile doesn't really say what they are, are a bit of a pain in the butt to reassemble especially because you want them to you know go with the flow so um, it's very hard to show on this knife but as you can see it all has this milled pattern and so you want these you know blue bits to go with that mill work and it's not very obvious like you can easily put this in in another direction by accident and that's kind of what i did and then i had to kind of like back it off turn it push it in so that it faced or like sat correctly and looked like appropriate. So I will say I'm not a huge fan of how um, unintuitive these little bits are. Like I like the idea, but you do have to keep in mind that they are very, like they'll go in any direction. So you just have to make sure that like you make, you keep them in line with the natural milled pattern on your handle. And I think that goes for the G10 or the titanium, this one in particular is titanium, but I think it goes for either variant. So aside from those two things, um, you know, it's just like assembling or disassembling any access lock from a Benchmade. You know, it's going to have the same pros and cons. It's not particularly difficult. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's not too much to say about the assembly or reassembly of it, but uh, I do not like this clip at all. This was a complete pain in the butt and it is necessary if you want to fully take the knife apart to remove the clip. And that's kind of something I've, 
Like I like that a lot of companies are going with like these minimalist, you know, amounts of screws, like the Savivi Spiny Dogfish uses, you know, pivot screw and then a back screw and that's it, you know, on both sides. And so I like that, but what I dislike is ironically also on this same Savivi, the uh, pocket clip is also an integral screw. And I kind of dislike that because one, if you ever want to not have a pocket clip on your knife, um, having the pocket clip be an integral screw basically um, messes that whole thing up. Like you can't not have the pocket clip because one of those pocket clip screws is integral to the knife's function. So I dislike that part about it. I also dislike the fact that not every time do I want to fully remove my pocket clip if I'm just trying to field strip a knife very quickly. So while I like the fact that these are both minimalist designs, once again, you can see very few screws on the Tactile Knife Co. and on the Spiny Dogfish, but you know, very minimalist designs, but at the same time too, dislike that you have to remove the pocket clip to um, get that like to get the knife apart. So not a fan of that, but anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video as always. God bless and I'm out.